Yesterday our little Wyandotte hen started hatching her eggs. I saw one chick, but I'm yet to see any others. I tried to have a bit of a look yesterday afternoon, but she told me to go away. I can see two unhatched eggs behind her, one of her own, and a brown one which belongs to the Morans. There's another egg there, looking like it's not doing much. So possibly the two Moran eggs are not hatching, and maybe one of her own. So that leaves two unaccounted for. In the other corner, we have another broody hen. She's a week away from hatching. The hen house is off the ground, so it's quite unsuitable for new chicks. They cannot negotiate the straw bale steps, which are looking quite dilapidated at this time of year, but there are no straw bales available yet at a reasonable price. They won't come until well into summer. But the chooks manage these all right. So this is one of our nursery pens. We have repurposed the shell of an old dryer. We do have a stash of clean straw for just such purposes. And I will put that in this afternoon. The dog crate is sealed with a bin liner, which you can sort of see there and that helps make it weatherproof. The shell gives it a bit more protection. The whole thing is nestled in amongst the tansy and the raspberries, which gives it more protection from elements and more importantly, sun. I have put fresh hay in the pen. Cobb is investigating. She will sit right up the back, so I have made it a bit thicker up the back, ready for when she makes her nest with her weight. It's mother hen moving day. Everybody's gone to bed. We just have to wait for it to get dark before we move mother hen. She has two brown eggs that she hasn't hatched out. They're water thingy has met a nasty end. It got knocked over and obviously the top has become brittle due to UV light. So the top will go to the recycling bin and I will just use the base. The big chooks also have a bucket but that's too big obviously for the chicks. But this will be okay for the chicks. Not too deep that they could fall in and drown and I'll just weigh it down with a rock. Okay, it's dark, time to move the chicks. Oh, you might want to put that stick, Ned, use that stick to hold the door open. You probably still have to go in the gap down between the slates, yeah. First of all, we get mother out. We hold a towel there because if any chicks drop out as we lift her out, they'll fall into the towel instead of down onto the ground. <laughs> One's come out. One in the nest. One in the nest. We okay. Hang on. I'll come and get that. So you've got her. She hasn't got any under her.
the chicks have to go in first, then mother will follow. You're right, in they go. Okay, pop her in and then shut the door. In you go, mother. That's it. I have made the chick crumble, starter crumble, which they will eat for the first six weeks. This is how much I made using this two litre yogurt bucket as my unit of measure. It will then get stored in this bin. I like the galvanised bins because they're vermin proof. If you have chooks, you will have rats and or mice at some point. Plastic rubbish bins are okay until they breach them. Once they work out the foods in there, there's no stopping them, but they can't get in here. All the chickens will eat this, so I'll have to make plenty. We have a second clutch of chicks coming next week, so they will want them as well. So the mix has been triple sifted between all my buckets and what have you. In and out, in and out. And now the finished product is ready to take up to the chook yard. I will give them this much. It should be more than they need, even with the big chooks helping themselves. At night time, when I shut them in, I bring this inside so that the rodents and whatever else don't help themselves to it during the night. So here is the food. I bought this little dog crate at the tip shop with the idea of it being a nursery pen but it's too small no one liked it but it's ideal for keeping the chicks food dry mother is not in a huge rush to get out because it's raining i have opened up the gate for her but she's not the slightest bit interested in coming out which is hardly any surprise so i still don't get to have a look at the little ones I'll just let the rest of the flock out. Oh, the rooster's over there asserting his dominance. Now the young rooster is very interested. Blue, he's the main rooster. He's found the chick's feed. Yep, she's not impressed with his attentions. Popping yourself up in there. surprised she didn't move further back in the pen overnight but she's certainly moving further back now oh there's a baby get out of the road yellow you'd have them out by now if it was warm weather wouldn't you that's a cute baby you've got there mother i normally hand feed them some corn first thing in the morning but i didn't bring any today because my hands were full with the the dish which is quite heavy because it's clay and the camera and the umbrella so the, these two hens are going straight to the feeder oh, that little one wants to come out but she doesn't want to let them out I wouldn't let them out either if I was you with those two roosters oh, now the other roosters discover the chick feed When they've all had something to eat, I think I'll let them out. That's always a good strategy when Mother wants to introduce her little brood to the yard. All the other chooks can be absent. No, it looks like she has a dead chick there. Well, I've never had that happen before. I wonder what happened. No, I won't try and remove it until she leaves the pen. So now she only has one chick. Not good. After a hatching I do the nest hygiene. I remove all the straw and remnants of eggshells. The floor was a bit wet this time so I have left the door open to dry it out a bit before I put the new fresh straw in. I put the bits out of the nest usually around one of the trees nearby. Cobb has been eating half an eggshell. 
that's the rest of it in there. I'll put that elsewhere. The hoe is the perfect tool to scrape out the floor in the coop. The rain has gone and in true Tassie style, the wind is blowing all the clouds away. The three eggs that were remaining in the nest I threw against a rock at the back of the block while I was upwind. None of them had chick embryos inside. I don't know what happened to the sixth egg. Sometimes they just vanish. I tipped that bucket of um, nest straw just above my one of my fig trees. It is fresh manure but it won't hurt the tree. I've put it far enough away from the root zone and on some pre-existing mulch and weeds that I don't care if they get burnt by the hot manure. The branches and broken bricks are there to discourage the chickens from scratching around too closely to the tree. I have shut the chickens out so that mother can come and go without being interrogated, investigated by the roosters all the time and I have left some food here for them. I don't need to leave water out, they have plenty they can access. Unfortunately the dogs don't think maize is that interesting except Bicky has to sample it. So it turns out she has two live chicks and the little dead one was a third one which explains the absence of the sixth egg. She must have had a third one underneath her wing or something. The boys thought they heard a third chick peeping last night. Somehow or other it has become crushed. We're normally pretty slick with our operations. But we were slower last night because of the videoing. I won't be doing that again. Once is enough for the purposes of the channel. Let's hope they're both little pullets. Because I want to build up my little Wyandotte flock. Mother hen and the young rooster have come to blows twice today that I've seen, as in jumping up at each other. Each time she has bested him and he has gone on his way. And now he comes to look, but he doesn't stay long. What are you two doing in there? The rooster's gone and sat in the nursery pen. One of the hens is joining him. As long as you are back on your roost tonight, because mother hen needs that, you silly animals. Oh, here he comes. Just checking it out, were you blue? Does it meet with your approval? <laughs> 